Welcome to Rocket Fame. We're about to rock the server set. December 20th, Sunday evening at 5 p.m. Let's start there. You can submit prayer requests, offerings, and find everything at our website, ROFF4G.com. The link is in the video description below. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everyone. It's good to see each one here tonight. We say God bless you. We're glad that you're here tonight. How many enjoyed that service this morning? Amen. That was a good service this morning. Praise the Lord. Um, we have lots of prayer tonight, so let's not forget the people we need to pray for. Uh, Evelyn is doing well. Uh, she's at home, but we need to pray for her and her son, no grandson. Her grandson, Gregory, is real sick tonight. Uh, they sent him home from the hospital, but he's in a lot of pain. They did uh, partial colonoscopy uh, for whatever he has colitis or something like that and so they can't they couldn't do what they needed to do so we need to pray for him that is very painful if you ever heard of anybody having it or if you've ever had it, it's a very painful disease so let's remember um, his name is Gregory I believe let's remember Gregory let's lift him up uh, let's remember Sharon and Debbie tonight um, Anyone else that, that we know needs special prayer? Anybody at all? Sister Jeannie? Oh, Jean Drake. That's right. She has a real bad infection in her toe. So we need to pray for Jean Drake. Sophia. Okay. Sophia needs prayer. She's sick. And I know there's others that have had this flu. Let's remember those. Yes, Joe? Okay, let's remember Sam. Amen. Praise the Lord. Leon? Oh, okay. Okay, let's pray. Amen. Amen. Let's remember Pastor Dan. He has been sick, but he's getting better. Uh, he's, uh, again, maybe making some decisions. So let's pray that, that it will work for him. His son is trying to encourage him to back off and slow down. So let's let's see that if, if he'll do that. If he could uh, earnestly, let's just pray for him that, that he'll be able to he'll be able to do less. Amen. He won't need the finances. Amen. Anyone else tonight is going to prayer? All right. Yes, Leon. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Is that right? Praise the Lord. Well, let's remember all these uh, tonight. We want to, uh, Lord willing, doing a, do a uh, communion, uh, uh, candlelight communion service on Wednesday night. Uh, I just want to do it, uh, however, whoever shows, that's good, but we want to do that on Wednesday. And um, Friday is Christmas, and so we have people out there, and they're going to travel. Let's remember everyone is going to be on the highway, and let's pray that they have safe journeys wherever they go. I know families will get together, but let's lift them up, and let's pray for them that God will keep them safe. Amen. And then uh, uh, next Sunday, we're going to vote. So let's pray for all the candidates. Let's pray for what, what God wants. And then we're going to start our January fast. And I really believe this year coming up is really important for us to continue uh, to pray and fast before the Lord because we need to make good decisions. And there's lots of challenges out there. Amen. And with all the violence that we had in this year, uh, we really need to pray that God will keep his hand on us and keep us safe. Amen. Anyone else tonight? Amen. All right, would you stand with me, please? We're going to go to prayer. And if you would, turn to your neighbor and tell him, I love you and you can't do nothing about it. Tell him, I love you and you can't do nothing about it. And if you would, repeat after me and say, this is the best day and the best year that I've ever had. Because Jesus 
is with me. One more time. This is the best day and the best year that I've ever had because Jesus is with me. Let's give him a clap offering tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's join together. Let's lift up all of these that need prayer tonight. They're depending on us, so let's stand in the gap tonight make up the hedge. Amen. Father, we thank you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus for this wonderful opportunity to be here. And Lord, we pray for everyone that's sick in body, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. All these fighting a flu virus, Lord, we ask you to touch them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to touch Jean Drake tonight and touch her foot, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, we pray for Gregory tonight, God. Touch him in his body. Take that pain away. Lord, remove that colitis, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray for Evelyn tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, let that shoulder mend. We thank you for those wonderful doctors and nurses that attended to her. Lord, we lift up Sharon and Debbie tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. We pray that you touch them. Lord, we lift up Sophia tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. We ask for healing and for Sam's spear tonight, Father God. And we ask you to touch him in his physical body, God, in the name of Jesus. Every urgent need, Lord, every special need, Lord, tonight. We ask you to strip the gifts of the Spirit and the power of God. Lord, we lift up those that will be on the highway, Lord, this week. Lord, we pray for traveling mercies and grace. Lord, we pray that you keep your hand of blessing and safety upon our people. Lord, for those at the rest home, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray, God, you touch those people, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We give you glory, praise, and honor, Father, tonight. Lord, we're lifting up, Lord, our services, Lord, on Wednesday and on Sunday. Lord, for the election, God, that you will move in a great and a mighty way, Lord. We pray that you will touch our church, Lord, and let us grow in advance in 2016. Lord, as we go to our fast, Lord, in January, may you help us, Lord, be faithful to the fast and help us to pray and intercede, Lord, as you desire us to, so we can have victory and that our church will be safe and that, Lord, you'll move in special ways at Rock of Faith, Lord, and we'll give you the glory and all the praise and the honor. Thank you for your wonderful blessings. And Lord, we ask tonight that you will move in a special way. Let us not leave the same way we came. Touch us and bless us, Lord. And we ask these things tonight in your name, the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Let's give him another clap offering tonight. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's lift our hands one more time to the Lord tonight. Lord, we thank you tonight. Lord, as we lift our hands, Lord, we give you glory, praise, and honor. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy tonight, Lord. Thank you for your kindness, Lord. We give you glory, praise, and honor. Lord, thank you tonight. Let the Spirit of God move in this place, Lord. We give you praise. Lord, we give you glory and honor. Thank you for your kindness, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for a beautiful day on today, Lord. We thank you for keeping your hand upon us. Lord, we give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And yea, the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, saith the Lord, but mighty through me to the pulling down of strongholds. Yea, know ye not that I have placed within you, yea, the power and the authority to do battle against Satan, saith the Lord. Therefore know that, yea, that there is victory ahead for you, saith the Lord. So push forward, saith the Lord, yea. Yield thyself to my spirit and to the gifts that I have given you, saith the Lord. And I will work in your midst. Yea, I'll do a work. I will do things that 
yea, even men will be astounded. You have already done works in this place, saith the Lord. Many have felt my touch and my power. And therefore know that I plan to do even greater things, saith the Lord. Do not look to the left or the right, but continue to push forward. For I will give you victory, yea, uh, my joy shall fill this house, shall flood this house, saith the Lord. And this place shall return to its former glory, saith the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Let's give our praise team a hand tonight. Let's tell them thank you tonight. Praise the Lord. And one more time tonight, would you turn to your neighbor and tell them, I love you and you can't do nothing about it. Tell them, I love you and you can't do nothing about it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated tonight, if you will. Praise the Lord. We're going to receive our evening tithe and offering. This goes to the expense of our church. Uh, we like you to give us unto the Lord. We enjoyed our service this morning. Amen. I really enjoyed it. Amen. And um, tonight we're going to, uh, amen, continue in that vein. But we're getting closer and closer, amen, to Christmas. It will be on Friday. So let's keep praying and, and let's keep worshiping and let's draw near uh, to the Lord tonight. Praise the Lord. Would you do this? Turn to your neighbor, smile really big, and tell them this is a friendly church. This Amen. Friendly church. This is a friendly church. Amen. A friendly church. Not to be deceived. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you tonight and once again for the opportunity to be here. And Lord, we ask you to bless the offering. We ask you to bless the gift and the giver. Lord, we ask you to meet the need tonight. We ask these things tonight in your name, the name of Jesus, and everyone said, Amen. If you have an offering, please bring it to the storehouse of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Tonight, if you have your Bibles, if you'll turn with me to Luke chapter 1 tonight. Luke chapter 1, we shared this morning in Luke chapter 2. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to ask uh, Sister Mary Lee, would you ask the blessing on the word tonight? Amen. I'm not going to try to read the whole thing here, but tonight, let's start in verse 45 of chapter 1 of Luke, and I'm going to read down to verse 55. And blessed is she that believe, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath opened his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, and as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. Amen. <coughs> In... Uh, the story and which we call the Christmas story. There were several events that took place um, in, in order for uh, uh, what we call Christmas to take place. Uh, first of all, there was a woman named Elizabeth that was Mary's cousin. 
and uh, she was visited. She and her husband were visited by an angel. And um, Zechariah was uh, Elizabeth's husband. And the angel spoke to her and said that she was going to have a, a son. And um, his name was to be called John. Elizabeth was going to be the mother of John the Baptist. And she was up in years and she and her husband could not have children. But uh, the angel spoke to her. And she believed what the angel spake, but her husband did not. And while he was in the temple, um, he found that, that while the angel spoke to him, he was not believing that his wife would conceive and have a baby. And so he could not speak. The angel took his voice away for the whole entire duration of Elizabeth carrying the baby. I'm headed somewhere, so just stick with me for a little while. Amen. He could not speak whatsoever for about nine months. Amen. And an angel also visited Mary. And the angel spoke to Mary and said that she would conceive of the Holy Spirit. And she wasn't married, and so she was going to have a baby. And she didn't understand how could, this could take place. And so the angel spoke to her and said, the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost, in those days they believed the ghost and spirit were the same thing. It's literally, if you read it in the Greek, it's the same word. Why they translated it different, I don't know. It's spirit and ghost, but to them were the same thing. And so the Spirit of God came upon her and she conceived and Jesus was placed in her womb. Excuse me, I want to take a few minutes here. And I believe your future can be better than you could ever imagine if you could just learn to believe when God speaks to you. If you could learn to believe the Word of God, if you could learn to act on the Word of God, you will find yourself receiving greater and greater blessings. Um, one of the, the most difficult things for most people is to believe when you can't see it. Um, we are Christians, and we're supposed to live by faith. And I meet a lot of Christians that do not live by faith. they got to see it, feel it, taste it, touch it, or they're not going to believe it. But in this case, Mary couldn't see it, neither could Elizabeth. But the words that the angel spoke were believed by both of the ladies. And uh, it's really funny to me because it was the man that had the problem in unbelief. Zechariah was the one that didn't believe the angel. And so he was um, made dumb for uh, nine months, amen, until his wife conceived. And when his wife conceived, he spoke, opened his mouth and spoke, and literally spoke a psalm out, amen. Um, Y'all look me kind of funny tonight. Amen. But this is really critical where we're headed for. And in January, we're going to start a fast. But we need to believe God. We need to believe God's word. We need to advance in the things of God. And the only way we can do it is if we'll believe what God tells us. Amen. Um, often, I'm amazed at the people that go to church that do not believe God. I always share the story when I took the church. I was always amazed at how many people thought I was going to starve to death because I took the church and it was not in the best condition when, when I took it. But God, amen, spoke to me about doing so. But I don't know how other people live, but if you don't live by faith, then you're in trouble because you are always going to expect to see it first. And it doesn't happen first. It, faith has to come first in order for the answer to come. And in this, this story, I am so thrilled, especially with these ladies, that when the angel came to visit them, they were like, amen, let's go, praise God. And the man was, well, I don't know. I don't know if we can do this or not. And, and it's, a, it's a different attitude. It's a different spirit. 
And, and God intended for us, amen, to have a spirit of faith, a spirit of belief that we can advance and go forward even though we're in, in, in difficult uh, situations. All of the great men and women of the Bible believed and trusted in God. And I'm telling you tonight, you're going to have to make up your mind if you're going to believe and trust God. I said this morning, and I'll say it again, I believe in Jesus. I believe in what he said. I believe in what the New Testament says. I believe in his commandments, and I believe that if he agrees with something, I'm going to agree with it. If he disagrees with something, I'm going to disagree with it. I mean, I don't care if it's politically correct or not, I don't know, uh, you know, what, what politicians believe anyway, but my own opinion is most of them aren't going to make heaven. Amen. So I want to make heaven. Y'all do whatever you want to do, but amen, I'm not following a politician. I'm going to follow Jesus and the word of God. Amen. And, and political correctness has nothing to do with the Bible. I didn't get amen on that one. It doesn't. It has absolutely nothing to do with the Bible. But the Word of God, amen, can heal you. The Word of God can deliver you. The Word of God can sustain you. The Word of God can do things that you can't do. And if you believe it, you'll find that God will uphold you. Amen. By, in one place it said, with the right hand of his righteousness, he will sustain you. And so you can be sustained. Amen. One of the things that people do, amen, is that they they uh, base their faith on how much money they have. I didn't get amen on that one. Hallelujah. They base their faith if they have a big fat uh, balance in their checkbook, then everything's going to be all right. And if they got a zero uh, goose egg, amen, there, that everything's going to be bad. But I like to say that tomorrow somebody could write you a check, amen, for a lot of money, and your goose egg could look pretty good. Or you could have a lot of money in your checkbook, and you could find that you owe a lot of money in a bill. Somebody can send you a fat bill and watch your bank account go to zero. Anybody ever done that? I know mine has, amen, has gone from a lot to nothing. But thank God I like it when it goes the other way. Hello? But it's by faith in God that we live. It's by faith that we believe. I want you to look at these ladies. And, and, and Mary spoke this psalm. That the Bible says that the Lord regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. That God was looking at Mary and he chose her for her heart's condition. How many women could he send an angel to that would absolutely believe every word that came from the angel? She was a very special person, not because of her outward appearance, but because she believed and trusted in God. God is looking for people that believe in him. Amen. God is looking for people that trust in him and his ability. When Jesus went to the tomb of Lazarus, he was trying to get Mary and Martha to believe in him. And we find that Mary and Martha struggled with faith, amen. And they kept saying, oh, we know if you would have been here four days ago, our brother would have lived, and we know that he'll live in the resurrection and all that. And Jesus just plainly said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And so finally he got it over to them, amen, and he went to the tomb. But he, he wept before the tomb because of the challenge that people did not believe that he was good enough or that he would be good enough to raise Lazarus from the dead. They did not believe that was the nature of God to come to the lowest state of somebody, to come to the difficulty of somebody who has no money and not lots of things. Amen. Once again, God is not looking at your outward appearance. He's looking at your heart. He's looking at whether or not you believe or not. How many of you know the story of King David, how that Samuel went out there? He was looking for a king, amen. And God spoke to him to go out, and he said, I want you to anoint one of the sons of Jesse. And so they brought several of his sons out, amen, 
And God said, it's none of these. And Samuel said, you got anybody else? And so they brought David from the herding the sheep and gathering the sheep, I should say. And they brought David in, amen. And David was not very tall. The Bible calls him ruddy. He was a handsome lad, but he wasn't very big. And God said, this is the one. David had, had the biggest heart. He had the most faith. He was willing to go fight Goliath. But before that, he fought a lion and a bear for his father's sheep. Uh, Y'all now listen to me, amen. God, amen, could see the heart in David. God could see the courage. And so he chooses people that will believe and trust in him. And that's what he's looking for, amen. Not for people that have lots of money, amen. I don't mean this in a, in a bad way, but a couple of the people that I met, in fact, the ones that I met with the most amount of money have never donated any money to this church. I met a, a few people, not a lot, a few, that had a great deal of money. And, amen, it would have been really nice if they would have helped and assisted us. But they did not even give us one offering. Y'all not listen to me, amen. And somehow or another, when people get a lot of money, they have faith in the money. It's awful quiet. I would be, I, I was amazed of, at my first uh, experience of seeing this happen. But I've seen people that were given lots of money. And I've seen them disappear from the church. One of my friends told me about a man that sold his business and he was going to help his church out. And he sold his business and disappeared. And he did not even give the church one offering from selling his business. And he had a lot of money when he sold the business. And so I don't know what it is, but if your dependence is on money, I feel sorry for you because you could lose it in a hurry. Hello. It can disappear in a, in, in a hurry. And now, amen, with identity theft, can I get a witness, amen? It can disappear and you don't even know it. Hello. It's gone. Amen. So I, I want to I want to be a better Christian next year. I want to believe God. And I don't know if anybody's with me, but there have been days where I felt like I've had faith that if God asked me something, I could do it. And then I've had days where if he asked me, I'd be looking for my faith. Like, it was here yesterday. I know I had it yesterday, but where did it go today? Hello. Some days it seems like I could just kill the devil, amen, one-handed, amen. And other days I'm looking, what's going on here, amen. So that's not consistency. That's not where God wants me to be. He wants me to believe his word. No matter what I feel, no matter what it looks like, amen. I read the man's testimony about healing, and he began to share how that his body was screaming to him that he was not healed. But the word of God declared to him that by the stripes of Jesus, he was healed. And if he could believe that he received it, he could get it. And so he chose to believe what the word of God said above what his body was telling him, and the man rose up well. Amen. I remember the story. I'm preaching tonight. Amen to me. But I remember the story of a man who belonged to a different denomination, not a full gospel denomination. And he got sick, and he started studying healing out of the Bible. And he was asked to go to this place to preach. And so he preached on healing. His whole sermon was on healing, and when he got done, he said, I take Jesus as my healer today. And so after the service, some of the men said, we would like you to go to lunch with us. The only thing, it's up the mountainside. you got to walk up the mountainside to the restaurant. Amen. And this man had a bad heart previously, but he was claiming healing. Amen. And he knew that if he said no, then he wasn't really believing God. And he said it was the hardest thing he ever did, but he climbed that mountain. He began to walk. He said there were times where his heart felt like it was going to beat out of his chest, 
but he said, I claim Jesus as my healer. Amen. And by the time he got to the restaurant, he was completely healed by the power of God because he took Jesus over his condition. Amen. It's difficult to do this. Lots of people don't want to live this way. Amen. Lots of people want to live by money. Even on television, many different places, amen, people live by how much money they have, not by faith. Very few people I know will go out, amen, just at the beck and call of God. God intended, amen, for us to follow him. And it's not based on how much money we got, but it's based on what we believe. And so because we believe God, and this is where I'm going tonight, amen, we need to read the Bible because, and when we begin to believe it, amen, above everything else, amen, and, and, and I don't want you to forget this story. Here's two ladies, amen, that have no money. They are not wealthy. They live very, very meekly, and they are probably farmers, amen. They don't have much money, and an angel shows up and tells them, you're going to give birth, amen, and they're like, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus, amen. It wasn't based on their financial condition. It was based on they believe what the angel said. Now, what would happen Tomorrow, amen, if you go to work and you told, and you said uh, you had a visitation of an angel and the angel said, thus saith the Lord, and you believed it. What do you think that the people around you will think about you? What do you think your boss will say? You might be looking for a new job. Can I get a witness? Amen. You might be looking for new friends. Amen. Hello. Sometimes when God speaks to me, I keep my peace. Because I know people. If I tell them what I know, amen, I'm looking at them. I know they ain't going for that one, amen. God's intent, amen, was to bring his faith to people. In fact, the Bible says, uh, uh, Paul told Timothy that you should teach faithful men these things. He didn't say you teach it to everybody. You teach it to people that are going to believe it and pass it on to somebody else. Hello. It's got to come. you got to believe. It doesn't do you any good to teach somebody that's not going to use it. Amen. you got to find somebody that's going to put it into action. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I love this story. Now, I want to take a minute here. I'm going to get in trouble. I know I'm going to get in trouble. It won't do you any good as great a faith that, that both Mary and Elizabeth had, it won't do you any good to pray to them. Hello? Hello? It won't do you any good to pray to Mary. Mary didn't die on the cross. Mary didn't take 39 strides for your healing. Mary didn't visit Herod in Herod's palace. He didn't go in before Pilate. He didn't do it, amen, didn't pay for nothing. I, I'm going to get in trouble. If Mary died on the cross, it wouldn't save anybody. I'm going to get a letter. Somebody's going to shoot me tomorrow, amen. And not only that, I'll say this. Mary wasn't Catholic. She was Pentecostal because she got the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2 and spoke with other tongues, amen. Elizabeth too, amen. Amen. I'm really going to get in trouble. Amen. It won't do you any good to pray to somebody that cannot help you. And you can name the saints from here to East Texas. Amen. Just put them up there. Praying to a saint won't help you because they did not die on the cross for you. They didn't pay the price for you. So you need to ask the Father in Jesus' name and the Holy Spirit of God will do something on your behalf. Amen. I don't know if we can put this on the internet or not. Amen. I get in trouble. <laughs> Maybe we ought to change the station. Amen. Put it on a different station. They'll, they'll be looking for us. Amen. <laughs> 
You know, I was thinking about this both this day and today and this week. I've had to take a lot of classes. I've been through school. And I've never taken one class where they change the book so it make it easier for me to learn it. They didn't erase things out of it. Hello? If I took a math class and they said, you're going to have a test on chapters 3, 4, and 5, you better know what 3, 4, and 5 said, because if you don't, you're going to get an F on the test and you're not going to pass the class. They're not going to change it for you. Can I get a witness? Hey, man, you're going to learn how to do it or you're going to fail. Hello? I've had people train me and teach me, and they, they began to tell me, you need to believe God, amen, and trust him, amen, and, and you've got to do it God's way or it's not going to do you any good. And too many churches have moved way far away from the principles of God, and they do all kinds of things that do not affect a change or help in your behalf because they do not pray to the Father in Jesus' name in line with the word. They're often asking God for money. They even command him to give it to them. Well, I'd like to know, amen, I'd like to know if God ever gave anybody a quarter. Amen. Hello? By you telling him that he has to do it. My sons, amen, at times try to tell me what to do. Good luck with that one. Can I get a witness? Amen. <laughs> Try to tell me what to do. You're not even the first base. Amen. I'm not going to listen. Talk to the hand. Can I get a witness? Amen. Not going to work. When I come before God, I realize that I'm coming, as I said this morning, for an all-powerful, an all-knowing, and an everywhere-present God. Why do I want to depend on my ability when I have His ability? Why do I want to pray or try to lean on something that somebody else said? Amen. Nobody else I know knows everything. You know somebody you can pray to that knows everything other than the Lord Jesus? Do you know somebody, amen, that's all powerful other than Jesus, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Or somebody that's everywhere present at the same time? I know for me, when I'm going somewhere, I could be, amen, in another county or another state or wherever, and if I call on Jesus, he'll show up. Hello? I'm not calling on Charlie or John or Mary or somebody else. They're not going to show up. I'm not going to do it. It won't happen. It won't help me. I can pray and pray and pray and pray, and they're not going to be there. But I can call upon the name of the Lord, and he'll be there for me. So in this, this story, it's presenting to people, and people used to do this mostly because they didn't have money. And God came to this earth to give a, a system to people that needed his help. They did not have finances, but if they could believe God, then he, they would uh, get his assistance because that's what he's looking for in people. He's looking for somebody that believes him. Not for people, amen, that have lots of money. The Bible says here that he sent the, the rich empty away. I didn't write that, by the way. If you want to yell at somebody, you can yell at the Bible if you want to. I didn't write that. Hello? Hello? And I met, just like I said, I met people that have lots of money have never sent us anything. What a shame. I know people. We got people here now, and we've had people over the years. They get a fixed income. The first thing they do is tie to the church. It's not a lot of money, but they send what they got, and that's all they need to, according to Malachi, is to send the 10% and give in the offerings when they can. 
Hello? It's all it says. And what does the Bible say? He'll rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he'll open the windows of heaven, and he'll pour you out a blessing. There won't be room enough to receive it. And when people begin to live by faith and live by what the Bible says, amen, then they become effective. Things begin to happen for them, amen. Spiritual things, things happen for these ladies. These ladies could not have a baby, and they did. Mary could have, amen, later on she did, but she could not have one supernaturally, and that's how she, amen, gave birth to the Lord. And the Spirit of God, amen, is walking the earth. The Spirit of God has angelic beings out there. The Spirit of God has ways for us to receive, amen, and they're not, amen, natural ways, they're supernatural. And so we got to get into this thing called prayer. We got to get into this thing called worship, and we got to get into this thing called Bible study. Amen. It won't take me long when somebody on television or somewhere else starts preaching that I could tell right away whether they're telling me the truth or not because I've read the book. And so when someone starts preaching something that's not in there, I'm like, click. It's not in there. I know better. Amen. I know somebody, I won't mention any names, so I won't get in trouble, that they believe that you can just call it in. You can call in your finances. But they have a little bank, amen, when they're preaching, and they want people to put money in that bank so they'll have gas money. And then they sell T-shirts and hats and all kinds of other stuff, amen, in the foyer. Y'all not listen to me. If they could sell it, if they could find it and sell it, they would, amen, because confessing it in is not working. Otherwise, what do you need the bank for and the T-shirts and the hats and the sweatshirts and all the other stuff? you got to sell it all. Just go ahead and go into retail. You make more money, amen, because you can't call it in. It will not come here, amen, in that fashion. But you can pray, and I don't mind if, you want to earn your living, Paul sold tents, and I'm good for that. But you have no business telling somebody they can call it in when you can't even do it. Won't work. I'm preaching to me. When Jesus came to the earth, amen, he was going to come, as the Bible said, I said this morning, a Savior he was going to come to deliver me. He was going to come and teach me. He was going to be with me forever. And even me, the youngest in my family, the least of my brethren, however you want to put it, he'll come even to me and help me. He came to the earth, the Bible says, according to John, not to condemn the world, but to save it. Amen. And so salvation comes from God and blessing comes from God. And faith and hope and joy. I've seen people, amen, when trouble happens, they get mad at God because difficulty happens. I cannot tell you why difficulty happens, but I don't throw my joy away when I have a problem. I don't throw my faith away when I run into trouble because I know trouble doesn't come from God, it comes from the devil, the thief comes to steal, kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus came to give me life and that more abundantly. So I know, amen, my joy is going to sustain me in a difficult time because God did not put the trouble on me. The devil did, but it's the word and spirit of God that's going to get me through to the other side. I'm going to praise the Lord. Amen. If you look from here out, in the congregation, you can see people when they don't want to praise the Lord. Hello. When we do our confession, oh, I can really see it. This is the best day. I see it ain't the best day. I don't like a, ter a terrible day. Hello. It's the best day, the best year, the best week. No. 
It's the worst day. It's the worst week. It's the worst year. Well, you're, you're going by conditions. You're going by the experience you have. The confession is literally to believe that God's going to help you get through that. Doesn't mean you're not going to have a bad day, and there's not a person in here that doesn't have bad days. Nobody in here doesn't have bad weeks or bad situations. Everybody does, but it doesn't mean that you have to let that overtake you. And so these ladies, in their lowest estate, believe God above their condition. I'm preaching to me. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying. This is a good day right now. And you're getting ready to go into even a better year than this year was if you will dare believe and trust in God. When you come to church, when you come to church, you ought to praise the Lord whether they sing your favorite song or not. Hello? When you come to church, the Lord should be praised. In fact, it said you should praise him in the morning, praise him at noontime, and praise him when the sun goes down. I often see people in their situations because I have to deal with the difficulty. And I see certain people that have great faith, and I see people have no faith. I see people that believe and trust in God and other people that don't believe and trust in God. And I've had people tell me they believe God, but on the same count, every time they open their mouth, it's negative. It's awful quiet in this place. Amen. If you're believing God, what should come out of your mouth is something positive. Amen. There was the story of this man that worked in this place, and his boss was mean like a junkyard dog. And it came to pass that the man died. And so they began to talk on the job, and people were saying, aren't you glad so-and-so died? He's not here anymore. And they came up to the Christian on the job. And they said, aren't you glad that so-and-so died? He's so mean and awful and whatever. And the Christian meditated a minute on it. And he said, well, at least he whistled nice. Amen. It took him a while. He had to think of something positive. Can I get a witness? Amen. At least he whistled nice. He had a nice whistle. Amen. That brings a difference in your in your attitude. It brings a difference in the way that you respond to situations. And and when when people are 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 in a bad situation, they begin to believe what God's word says above their condition. They begin to conquer situations they would have never have conquered. I tell the story. There was a captain in World War One that read Psalms ninety one to his troop every day. Every day he read Psalms 91 to his troop. There's people that don't believe it, but he said, every one of my men came back from World War I. None of them died. Every one of them made it all the way through the war and back again and came home. And we quoted Psalms 91, amen, every single day. People need to have something positive above the negative. You need to have a greater force working for you than what's coming against you. And all of us, amen, as soon as we leave this building, we're going to have a negative force try to get us not to believe. Oh, hallelujah. I deal with this all the time, especially this time of year. People want to have lots of money, buy lots of gifts, and do lots of stuff at the Christmas time. And most of the people I know, don't have lots of money, and they can't buy lots of gifts, and they can't do things that they like to do at this time of the year. But you can do something. You can smile and wish Jesus a happy birthday. Can they get a witness? Amen. You can make yourself some fudge and have some hot chocolate. Hello. You can do your shopping at the 99 cent store. Can I get a witness? Amen. Hello. 
I'm preaching to me, amen. You don't need a lot. Can I get a witness, amen? You can do it. Hallelujah and smile while you're doing it, amen. I don't have to be like somebody else. I can't qualify, amen. I know people that have really expensive cars, but I come to find out it's really expensive taking care of them. One person had a, a special car. They have to drop the engine to change the oil. It's $1,000 to change the oil. I'm not kidding. It's the truth. I want you to know I can go to Jiffy Loop tomorrow and get the oil changed, and it will not cost me $1,000. <laughs> I can get it changed lots of times, and it won't cost me $1,000. Amen. Hello? I like my truck. It's a nice truck, and it doesn't cost me a fortune to run it. But if I go buy some kind of Ferrari or expensive sports car, unless I have a lot of money to take care of it, it's going to sit in my garage. Can I get a witness? It won't go anywhere. I can't change the oil. I can't get the alternator fixed. I can't put tires on it. Can I get a witness? Too much money. I'll be riding a bicycle. Can I get a witness? Amen. Got to ride my bicycle to 7-Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I'm preaching to me. I love the story of Jesus because it changed my life. The way I live today is entirely different than the way I grew up. The way I've lived for more than 40 years has been by faith. And as my wife was here to testify, if we ever did anything where we had enough money first, I don't know what it would be. If we have to do something, we do it. I shared the other day. My wife yelled at me and said, come here and take a sniff. Something's wrong. And so I went and opened the door of the garage, and it's filled with smoke. Our washing machine is at least 15 or 20 years old, or was. It's no longer there. Thank you. Amen. But I went to get another one. I don't know about anybody else. We can't live without washing our clothes. I don't have that many clothes. I can live the rest of my life without washing something. Can I get a witness? And so we went and did it. We didn't see how much money we had. We're just going to figure it out as we go. We got another washer. It's already in the laundry room, and the other dead one's gone. Amen. My wife wanted to try another load to make sure it was the washer. She said, I want to put in just a few clothes in here and we'll turn it on to see if it really is that. I said, this isn't rocket science. That stupid thing is a 15 years old. It's almost dead. Amen. We're not going to set the house on fire to amen to secure you that you know this thing is gone. It's, bad. it's dead. Can I get a witness? Amen. We got rid of that thing and got another one. I'm preaching to me. Do you do how do you do things? I remember one time my car, I had to get another car. My car was wearing out. And I went, I didn't have any money. And I went to a dealership and I picked out a car that I wanted to get. And I said, I, I don't have cash to put down. And they went and talked about it and said, It's your car. You can have it. Amen. And I traded in my other car, was about to die, and I drove off the lot with another car, and I did not put one penny down on it. You try to do that tomorrow. Can I get a witness? Amen. They want to put some money down. If they're going to loan you money, they want to see something come out of your pocket. Amen. Besides Lent, can I get a witness? Amen. I'm preaching to me. I don't know how you live, but I live that way. If I have to do something, I do it. I get in my car and I say, God, in the name of Jesus, I got to go do this. Lord, I need you to go with me. Amen. And I'm believing you right now to take me there and bring me back. And whatever I need to accomplish, I need you to help me. Hello. 
not based on my checkbook, based on believing and trusting in God. I love, I love Mary and I love Elizabeth. They walk around believing God. Hello? They just, just believe God. It's so. We're good. Every, everything is good every day. They pray every day. They read their Bible. They don't have a Bible. They've read the Old Testament. But they believed. Hello? I come across people that don't believe at all, go to church every Sunday, and they look like they lost their last, only as friend. Hello? It's not helping them any. They're not, they're not getting anywhere. Depression overtakes them. They go in the room. They lock the door. They put stuff over the windows, and they put the blankets over their head, and they stay in the room for days at a time. Hello? Well, that's going to help you a lot. Hello? Yeah. Same devil was out there last week, was out there this week. Amen. <laughs> Amen. What a way to change your life. It's just start believing and trusting in God. Hello. Let the Spirit of God, Amen, take over your life. Let the, the instructions of the Bible begin to take first place in your life and watch your life change. Pretty soon you're starting to do things that that you couldn't do before, but you start to take a step of faith. You don't have the money, but you have to go do it, so you go do it, and you find that somebody will sell you a car or help you do something, and you'll be amazed. I'll go out there, and, and all of a sudden, I can do something that I've never been done before. When I was growing up, we never lived by faith. If we didn't have the money, we didn't even go out. We didn't even go look for it. We didn't live by faith, and so if you didn't have the money, you didn't do it. But we don't have that system now. I don't live by that. If I need to do it, I got to go do it. Hello? Amen. <clears throat> I enjoy this time of year because I don't base it on how much, how much money I have. In my neighborhood, my neighborhood is a neighborhood that likes to decorate a lot. And it's really fun just driving down my street. Amen. It didn't cost me any money to go home. Can I get a witness? Only the same money it did for the 24 years I lived there. And I drive down the same streets and I get to look at these pretty lights. And, and it's, it is. It's fun and whatever, but it didn't cost me anything. And I can, I can go. Amen. And I can get cookies or I can do something else, amen, or stay within my means and enjoy this season because my focus is on Christ's birth and not what I can buy somebody. Amen. Amen. I told my wife since I bought her a washer, that was her Christmas gift. Can I get a witness? Amen. I don't think she's going for that. Amen. Amen. I said it costs a lot of money. Y'all not listening to me. Amen. Can't get away with that. Amen. You only think you can. Leon bought Teresa a coat one year. She He told her that it was a two-year gift. Amen. <laughs> no, thank you, she said. No, I didn't. Amen. <laughs> no, it's not a two-year gift. That's a one-year gift. Amen. It's a shame that people don't get this. On TV, they preach money, 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 but they don't live this. Barnabas sold his lands, his houses, and he laid the money at the apostles' feet because he believed and trust God. Amen. But he believed it. Ananias and Sapphira, they did not have the faith that Barnabas did. They sold their stuff, and they only brought part of the money because their dependency was on the money. And they fell over dead in the church. I don't know what we'll do if we see anybody fall over dead in the church. I mean, we'll call 911. I don't think there's anything we can do for you, but we'll call 911. Amen. you got to learn to live by what you believe. Amen. 
Hallelujah. We are seeing in our world in this last year terrible acts of violence. We've seen terrible weather patterns. We've seen lots of things that have taken place. And yet we're coming to the end of the year. And somehow we've made it again one more time. We've helped to feed people all year long. We paid all of our bills, thank the Lord. And one way I can prove it, the lights are still on, the gas is still on, and the water is still on. Can I get a witness? Amen. <laughs> and we're still in the building, so they didn't throw us out. Can I get a witness? Amen. Hello. We did it. Some days I don't know how, some weeks I don't know how we're going to do it, but we do it. It shows up, it gets here, and I thank the Lord for that. Because we're living by faith. In here, Mary was going to give birth to a Savior, and it was going to be significant, amen? And he was going to accomplish here a Savior as a deliverer, a healer, somebody that makes you whole. He's going to come to the earth so he could help you. And Mary was just the delivery system to bring Jesus to the earth. Hello. And I realize that I'm just a messenger tonight. I have a good friend I did the funeral for. He passed away. His name is R.W. Berger. Great man of God, preached the gospel, lived it. Amen. And now he's gone. There's many others that I know that preach the gospel, and it wasn't the person that was significant. It was the message. And they preached the message, and people got delivered, and they got help, and they got grace because somebody was willing to submit to God and just go do what God called them to do. Changed a lot of people's lives. When I went to do the service, he had. Some of his family members that are pretty ornery. I know I've had family members that are a little ornery. Amen. And they gave their testimony. R.W. came to the house and got after us. Amen. He said when he left, we laughed at him. Amen. We thought he's crazy Pentecostal. But she said, this one lady said, down the road. Amen. God got me. Amen. I got saved and filled with the Spirit. Amen. And she remembered all the things that R.W. said to her. And because he prayed for them and ministered to them, that church that I was at had several of his family members that were there. Because of his efforts, they got saved and filled with the Spirit, and now they serve in the Lord. Amen. I'd like to have a year like that for us. See our families come in, see our friends come in, people that have fallen away or backslidden. We'd like to see them come back. But it takes us to believe it. It takes us to be a Mary or Elizabeth that says, if God said it, then it's so. If God said it, we believe it, and that's it. Amen. I'm not changing my political viewpoint. If you want to go to a church that has, there's plenty of them that have done that. You can find yourself one that has changed their viewpoint. Hello. Yeah. It won't help you because he doesn't change. Jesus doesn't change. But we have this opportunity to, to believe God. Amen. Let me, let me just finish with this and we're going to pray. We're going to celebrate the birth of Christ coming up on Friday. With many people, the emphasis is going to be on something other than his birth. As I said this morning, they we're going to sing songs that Grandma got run over by a reindeer. And Frosty the Snowman. Hello. And we're going to sing songs that have nothing to do with the birth of our Savior. And the greatest, one of the greatest events that ever took place in the earth is when the Father allowed His Son to come down here and be born for you and me. And it wasn't, it wasn't just a child. It said in Luke chapter 2 that a Savior was born. A deliverer, a healer. 
<clears throat> someone that could sustain the church. And that's what I, I, I'm worshiping. When I drive down the street, I see pretty lights, but I worship the Savior. When I see other things that, that represent Christmas or hear the music, I worship the Savior. I wish I could get people, amen, to understand that. Someone said one time, if I have a Christmas tree that I worship, the Christmas tree. Like, I don't know the difference between a living Savior and that Christmas tree. Hello? Hello? Do you think that some vine or leaf off that tree or pine needle can help me? Or any of the decorations, amen, can that help me? Or Santa Claus or any of his elves can help me? Can I get a witness? <laughs> Nobody can help me. Pray to Santa Claus and see what you get. Amen. See if his elves show up. Amen. <laughs> That's not who I believe in. Hello. I believe in the Savior. and he, He's done so much for me. I, I can't. It would take me forever, not maybe not forever, but a long time to share the last 43 years how I got here. And some things people wouldn't believe happened, happened. Hello. They wouldn't believe it, but it did. Amen. So I have fun at Christmas time. I don't have a lot of money, but I sure do have a lot of fun. My wife will make some fudge. My boys used to like to lick the spoon. They're gone now, so I get to lick the spoon. Hello. They're all grown up. Hello. She'll make fudge and cookies and stuff, and I'll, I'll hide them. Can I get a witness? Amen. Everybody come looking for the cookies. Amen. <laughs> They'll say, Dad, where'd you put the cookies? Where's the candy? Where's the fudge? They'll find it. They'll get it. We'll get it out. Amen. It's a wonderful time, and my focus, again, is on the birth of Christ. I hope yours is the same. Don't go, don't go home and be depressed. Come on, tell your neighbor tonight, don't go home and be depressed. Have yourself a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. Enjoy yourself. Find yourself something you can do and enjoy it. Hello. Find yourself something you can do and enjoy it. And celebrate the birth of Christ. Say happy birthday to Jesus every day this week. Every day this week, just tell him happy birthday. And that you're so glad he came to the earth to save you. Can I get a witness, amen, that he came here to save you? Don't let the enemy mess with your head. Amen. Hallelujah. Just let God do something special for you. And let the way us allow you to enjoy your time on the earth. Amen. Would you bow your heads with me? We're going to take a minute to pray. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you once again tonight for this wonderful service. And Lord, once again, Lord, in my heart, you know that I worship you and I serve you. I'm not changing my doctrine. My faith and my trust is in what you said and what you've done. I'm not going to deviate to something different. I'm going to believe in your word and your power, and the Holy Spirit and the grace of God. And Lord, as we go into this week, may we all Appreciate the fact that you came to this earth to save us, to give us deliverance, to heal us, to make us whole. And all the other things need to be pushed aside. That event in itself is the greatest event that we've ever experienced. Lord, may you bless our families. May you bless our people tonight. May your spirit, Lord, touch hearts and lives and help them to realize that this is a wonderful day. This is a wonderful opportunity and time for us to 
extend our faith and to believe and trust in you. There are good things yet ahead. We have a better future than we have even a past. We have beautiful things that are yet ahead of us. And one of them is the kingdom of heaven. Lord, may your spirit move in this place in a great way in this new year. The Lord will give you all the glory and the praise and the honor for it. And we ask it tonight in your name, the name of Jesus, and everyone said, Amen. Let's give him a clap offering tonight, if you would. Is there anyone that would like prayer tonight? You've come for a special reason. We'll be glad to pray with you. Anyone at all? And we'll take time to pray with you tonight. Anyway. <laughs> Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Would, would you stand, stand with me, please? please? We're going to dismiss our little prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. One more time, would you turn your neighbor to all of you and you can get out the way? To all of you and I can get out of the way. <laughs> Amen. I'd like, like you, if you would please to uh, pray, pray for our church, church this week. Amen. We're, we're going into our fast in January, which is coming up very shortly. Consider what you'd like to do and please join with us as we pray out the old year and pray in the new. Amen. Wednesday, we're going to do a candlelight communion service. If you can make it, it'd be wonderful. I know families got things to do. But we will, we will do a candlelight communion service. And so, please be here if you can. We're glad that you're here tonight. Amen. And we do have at least one visitor. Let's give our visitor a nice welcome. Let's take our question. Amen. We're going to ask our sister Mary, would you do this in this, please? Lord, we thank you for the Thank you for the word, God. We thank you, Lord. Amen. God bless you. Greet someone before you leave and tell them about it. God bless you.